everybody. Welcome to today's edition of the CrossFit Games Update Show. I'm Sean Woodland with Pat Sherwood and Tommy Marquez. And today, a special addition to the show, one Mr. Dan Bailey. Thank you so much for being here today. How you been? Been great. Thank you guys for having me back nice to the desk. Nice break, you know, not yeah. working out for 10 minutes. Right. <laughs> Downtown. Uh, Dan is somebody who actually knows a lot about the subject we're going to talk about today, and that is athletes switching regions. It's been done a lot in the past. And in the past, no one has ever switched regions and then gone on to reach the podium at the games. But the athletes you're looking at right now switched regions and then went on to win their regionals. So there are some challenges that you need to overcome when you switch locations. Dan, you did this. You went from the Central East to Southern California. What was that challenge like? Everything's just new, so what's your living situation going to be like? What's the new job that you're starting? Where are you going to train? Who are you going to train with? All these things can be kind of up in the air, and they're important as you approach the game's season. Um, and then the venue as well. So the venue that I was used to competing at was the Central East right. region, and then we went to SoCal. And just the different atmosphere, it kind of feels like you're, you're playing at an away game rather than playing mm -hmm. at home. Any difference kind of with the new athletes, for example, you must have had so much experience in Central East, their workout comes out, you're like, oh man, this is riches. I gotta watch Pan Check on this one. And now you're with a new crew. Does that play into it at all? It definitely does because you get a good feel of what the athletes are capable of. And even though Southern California is very competitive, nothing will ever compare to having to compete against Rich Froning, Graham Holmberg, Marcus Hendren, Scott Panchik, year after year after year. And we've got a handful of big names on both the men's and women's side who are competing in new regions this year. Let's start with the women and there are three big ones. The defending champion Catherine David's daughter goes from Europe to the Northeast. Margot Alvarez switches regions for the second straight year and Maddie Myers is now in Southern California. So when you look at these three women, the first question, which woman made it tougher on her to get to the games? For me, it has to be Maddie Myers. She was in the South last year. Granted, you had Camille, you had Margo, you have Amanda Goodman, Jen Jones, but she's moving to a region that is just absolutely stacked with talent. You look at Alexandra Lachance moved there as well. You have Brooke Entz, the reigning mm -hmm. champion in the California Regional. You have Pacelli, Voigt, Chanicho, Lauren Fisher trying to make a comeback. Val Vobrel is always dangerous because she's training hard Vobrel. this year. So she moves to a region that is just stacked with talent athletes that have been around for a long time, and she's still very young in this sport, so she's made it very difficult. No question. Yeah. I mean, yeah, rarely, whether on the men's side or the women's side, does moving to California to compete make your life right. easier. I know all the regions are tough. That goes mm -hmm. without saying. But Cali, come on. Yeah, it's, it's going to be tough. Uh, who made her life easier? I think Katrin made her life significantly yeah. easier. I don't know if I just offended a bunch of people in the north, you know, the east. <laughs> but, it, I mean, let's say you're not throwing down out there in the meridian. You could potentially not be throwing down against... Annie T, Sarah Sigmund's daughter, maybe Sam Briggs if she's over there. That's a nice trio of women not to have to compete against. Yeah. I mean, Margot Alvarez too. She, mm -hmm. I mean, she's moving regions again. Not to say that moving regions two years in a row isn't going to make your life more difficult based on what Dan said, but she's moving to a, a northwest region and a west regional where one of the athletes from last year, Jessica Kaur, is supposedly out due to pregnancy. So you have that's another spot that's opened up. Things were kind of up in the air in that regional last year as well. So I, I think she's not a lock by any means, but I definitely think her road to the games is a little bit easier not having to go against a champion like Camille yep. or some yeah. of those other women we mentioned. No doubt. Over Absolutely. on the men's side, two big names. The first being Garrett Fisher, who returns to Northern California. And then Brennan Fjord goes to Latin America, but he'll still compete in that South Regional. Again, remember we combined the regions. For both of these athletes, now, Fjord's never made it as an individual, and we haven't seen uh, Garrett Fisher at the game since he finished fifth in 2013. Let's start with Garrett. Is this the year he makes it back? I'll tell you what, there's not a lot of stiff competition on the men's side out there in California. <laughs> you know, he's got, <laughs> No, I mean, who you've got to deal with, he's got a lot on his plate. I mean, not only Johnny, I won the region last year, but, you know, potentially we don't know some people might go team or might not, but let's just throw all the names out there. You've got... John Para, Neil Maddox, mm -hmm. Chad Melton was there, uh, Alcaraz, Josh Bridges is a little fired up to come yeah. back. So it's a tough year and a tough region to say, yeah, this is my road to the comeback. I think it's going to be a tough year and a tough region no matter what, but I think we're going to see Garrett 2.0 compared to what we saw 
you know, back when he took fifth at the games. He's under the tutelage of Chris Spieler now. Right. So he's hitting definitely some things from a guy who has the experience, has the knowledge, Seven who knows times. what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And Garrett's been really humble. I've talked to him a couple times, and he said he's just kept his head down, and he's working hard. Yeah, and there's always something to be said about a little bit of home cooking, you know. He was out in the southeast. You know, in 2013, he was back here in NorCal, kind of where he came up and made his name. He's finally back in NorCal again this year, just kind of settling down those lifestyle factors, like not traveling, not training, not kind of being this CrossFit rock star, if you will. I think do wonders for your training when, like you said, you can just focus on training. And not making it was helpful in a way. Sure. I mean, he learned a lot about himself and where he needs to focus. Now, what about Brennan Fjord? We know he's quite the accomplished team athlete and all the accolades he's won there, but does he have what it takes to now get into the CrossFit Games as an individual? I think he's, I think it's, a great year lining up for him with just some athletes that might not be competing at the South Regional and as capable of an athlete as he is, I think he has a great shot. Yeah, he, he's an absolute stud and he, he showed up on our radar a few years ago in the Open and he made a splash in the Open. He finished in the top 10 at Regionals that year. Not necessarily what he wanted, but like you said, you know, you have Adrian Conway, not sure if he's going to go individual or team. Tommy Hackenbrook, his youth partner, you know, is is going team. You don't know where Matt Chan's at. Right. You don't. Chad Cole supposedly has a sh uh, shoulder injury. Yeah. You have a lot of question marks in that region. So even though he's moving to Brazil to kind of help open up a gym there, there's still a great possibility for him when he comes back stateside that he could go to. The game. But then you got some boys like Travis Williams, right. you know, Jordan Cook, mm -hmm. Roy Gamboa that are like, all right, not so fast. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's not that many spots right. available. Well, those are the new faces in the new places. That is going to do it for us today. I want to thank Dan Bailey for stopping by. For Tommy Marquez and Pat Sherwood, I'm Sean Woodland. We'll see you guys next time.